Hello, my name is Caitlin Buckwalter, and this is my first video log discussing the book The Planet of Junior Brown. The Planet of Junior Brown was set in Manhattan and written in 1971. It's a mixture of social realism, psychodrama, and utopian fantasy. When I first read this story, it seemed a little bit strange and puzzling to me, but after diving deeper into the overall meaning of the book, I found it to be quite insightful. During the time civil rights clashes in the South and civil rights demonstrations in the North dominated the public discourse. Children's books about black life most of them writ written by white writers, all had the same biased themes talking about discrimination and how to overcome it. But Hamilton had other things to write about besides racial conflict. Her book gives children, it gives children new images of black beauty and black power by transforming a society as a whole. The story revolves around Junior Brown and how to free him from the delusions of his manic music teacher and the constraint of his smothering mother. The book is an example to young children by showing them that going to school and doing honest work will help them succeed and survive in the real world, no matter how unfair it is. The psychodynamics of steering them away from a life of escalating crime is another great example of moral and ethical involvement for children. The book shows how the poor and ethically disenfranchised have little hope of effective treatment or fair play, especially in crowded urban areas like New York City. Survival often takes place outside the quote-unquote system. On the bright side, Junior's best friend, Buddy, shows so much love for Junior. And his patience with him offers a striking and memorable portrait of a young urban black man who has developed a strong ethic of service in his own struggle to survive. Both he and Mr. Pohl understand their own roles as enablers and caregivers to weaker people who are in danger of being eaten up by dysfunctional institutions. The book raises useful and hard questions about familial obligations, caregiving, and relationships between mental illness and social pressure. I love the strong bonds that the boys build between each other and how most of the adults don't talk down to, to the boys. Instead, they present them as people with quirks and problems and abilities. I think this is a great book to read to children because it has ways in showing children their worth and their ability to change the world, even if they aren't an adult. Thank you.